all had to be on cameras and the biggest blow up with all of us but uh you know i don't like sponsors to see that i don't you know like anyone to see that especially fans so i thought he would go in he didn't we sat there for a while i was on high side i had to clutch in though and i waited for him and it just took a long time and it's just frustrating that he even did that we counted the seconds and it did seem long um it might not to spectators because they don't understand from being inside the car what it really feels like and the time it takes well, i mean i don't i don't care whether she's in the other lane or anybody else in the other lane i'd like to win them all the rumor in the pit is that you plan on playing your exact normal procedure up on the starting line you don't plan on doing anything different in this round no, I, I don't see any reason to i mean i just go up there and do my normal deal i guess well, there is Pontiac Jack getting set to do his normal deal, and this matchup has tremendous implications in the point. Ted Jones told you how tight it was earlier. Rhonda Hartman, number three coming in, badly needs this victory, no matter who it is. You can bet all the fans will be watching the staging procedures. They look normal once again. It looks like Rhonda Hartman starting to pull away. Hartman, a 5-14 to pick up the win to Ostrander's losing. 5-17, good close race. And they run down the far end. Far end's a little bit closer than it used to be. They're doing some construction down there. Great launch for both cars. Great side-by-side -side race right to the line. And the whole shot came there, too. 476 reaction time, but it was a 514 to a 517. It was a race. Wow, we put these big tires on. I was worried about reaction time because I'm getting used to them. That was great. And these guys down at the bottom end, they were cheering for me, telling them to beat them. And, um, this just ends the story perfectly, so um, no one played games. We talked to him before, and uh, perfect race. Always perfect when you win them. Here's another guy looking for a win. This is Doug Foxworth from Lytle, Texas, number two in points. He was a runner-up a year ago in the championship. His opponent, Butch Blair from Martinez, California, the ageless top fuel pilot. Well, meanwhile, Pontiac Jack's got a bit of a problem. They're having trouble getting the fire put out. Now the PTS crew begins to see there's a problem there, and they'll roll in. Fuel had spewed out of the car. It just now lit fire, but it looks like they've got everything under control at Blair and Foxworth stage up. Well, the important point is it's far enough down the return road that it's well out of the way of the racers. Meanwhile, it'll be Butch Blair, the Fagawi car, picks up the victory with a 531 to Foxworth's losing 526. He did it with a whole shot, Bob. You can see clearly there, Blair is out first. Absolutely. This is not what Doug Foxworth needed. We move on now to our next pair. Here comes the points leader, Jim Bailey from Mantua, Ohio, the former alcohol funny car driver, having a dream rookie season in Top Fuel, driving the Frank Vapor machine. Here's his opponent, Jerry Freeman from Somerville, Alabama. Not a lot known about him. Bailey qualified very strong in the field with a 5-14, only 100th behind the number one qualifier. He won the Spring Nationals at Bristol, the prestigious event. So he's got to be the odds-on favorite to take this round of competition. Both cars staging very carefully. They're ready, and a nice green light start. Oh, Bailey carried the wheels off the launch pad. Down to the line they come. It'll be Bailey, but not by much. 5.11 to pick up the victory. That's low ET of the event so far. Bailey has it together. Now our final pair. Here is the former world champion in the category, Doug Herbert, number four in points coming into this weekend, and his opponent from Royal Oak, Michigan, David Bieneman. If you're Bieneman, what do you do? You qualify with a 555. Herbert qualified with a 513. He may go up and take a shot on that tree. That's the best chance he has here. horsepower unleashed at once oh problems for Bieneman Herbert with the easy pass but he's smoking out the pipes at the end he may have heard it but look at the ET on this one as we watch the run again Herbert with a 507 he's starting to flirt with the fours now he has low ET of the event Jim Brissett working Doug Herbert's wrenches once again and it shows it's amazing how well you know this racetrack I mean 507 <laughs> considering that with the weather change this is a whole new track Hey, that's good. <laughs> we basically had to set up to run about that 513, and Brissett says, well, let's go up there and, and uh, see what'll happen. We're not real, you know, we don't really care a whole lot about lane choice, but hey, that 07's great. Low ET, we hang on to top speed. Uh, I got 286 to, uh, again. Hey, that's great. We want to, we'd like to get the uh, speed record out here, which hopefully 
a little bit later in the day I could cool off a little bit and we could probably do that. I gotta say hi to my wife and thanks for her performance parts always on the edge. And so our matchups in the semifinals will be Jim Bailey against Butch Blair and Doug Herbert taking on Rhonda Hartman in Pop Fuel. We'll take a quick time out when we return to America's Corn Belt. We'll have more great professional drag racing action. Pro Modified up next. Stay with us. Back at Scribner, Nebraska. Part of a big crowd waving right into your living room or wherever you are as you follow the Mid-America Nationals here on the IHRA Trail. Before we get back to the action, let's look back at that scary moment involving a fire with Pontiac Jack Ostrander. This was on the return road during Top Fuel. Here's Brett Kepner with the story. Well, this rare return road incident occurred when the primer bottle accidentally was run over. It was ignited by the hot engine. And only quick action by the PTS crew really salvaged Jack Ostrander's top fueler. There you see one of the crewmen being tended to by the PTS and the first aid staff here at Scribner. The primer bottle is the bottle that holds the nitromethane that they squirt into the blower to get the engine fired. Now let's move on to Pro Modified quarterfinal action. This is Shannon Jenkins from Tuscaloosa, Alabama going up against Tom Nixon from Parkland, Florida. Both of these not regular racers on the IHRA trail. Jenkins qualified with a 663, pretty respectable. Nixon with a 680. Jenkins in a 1993 Corvette ZR1 with 706 cubic inches of Pontiac V8. Tom Nixon with a 1992 Pontiac Grand Prix and a 665 V8. Jenkins out first, a nice hole shot over Nixon. Let's see if he can hold him off. He does to the quarter mile, 6.80205. He'll move into the semi. That Corvette bodywork is absolutely nasty. And here's another prime example. This is Tim McCamus, the very first champion the class ever had. Speaking of champions, there is NBA star Larry Nance bringing his personal car to the line. His driver, Pat Moore from Kinsman, Ohio. Pat Moore, who got a big break from Nance after winning a Sportsman World Championship many years ago. And uh, Nance had a lot of faith in him, put him in this car, and he keeps doing a little bit better every year. McCamus, meanwhile, was runner-up at this event last year. Both cars staged, and first off the starting line will be McCamus. Oh, Moore got absolutely left at the start. He must have been looking down or something. Missed the tree entirely, and he gets blown away. Our next pair will be local favorite Carl Moyer, the Corvette dealer from Ankeny, Iowa. His opponent, Mark Carter from Ocarsh, Oklahoma. Moyer won the event last year. It's his home track. He wants to do good in front of the fans, and he's got this one in the bag. Carter lost traction, had to shut it down, an easy pass for Moyer. Moyer with a 669, but Carter did leave the line first. He just had problems. Not a good sign. Now here comes the man you've got to get around if you're going to get to the Pro Mod Championship. Three-time and defending world champion. He's got a fat points lead right now. Scotty Cannon, his opponent right there. That beautiful yellow 1994 Chevy Lumina Z34. Jeff Enslin from Lakeland, Florida. Scotty qualified number one with a 662. Then in the most previous round, he ran a 657, so the car's going a little bit quicker. That is Scotty Cannon's modus operandi. Just get a little quicker with every round. Oh, he gets left by Enslin by just a bit. Enslin was off first. Does he have enough? No, the car won't ET Scotty. A 659, 209. You know, Enslin had a good jump on him, but could only pull a 701 up for ET. So here are your semifinal matchups. Shannon Jenkins against Carl Moyer and Scotty Cannon against Tim McAmos in a rematch of our Summer Nationals final. Now it's time for drag racing pioneer Big Daddy Don Garlitz with Big Daddy's Inside Scoop brought to you by Mopar. Stalkers, the backbone of the sport. They were then and they are today. I remember back in 1962 when you could go into the showroom and buy one just exactly the way you wanted it, ready to race. Just pull off the header plugs and away you went. I had a 62 Dodge, used to drive it to Texas, race it, drive it home was direct factory involvement in those days. These cars were raced the way they built them with very few modifications, no roll cages, none of that kind of stuff, little bitty seven inch wide rear tires, and they were truly stalkers. 
Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, they all participated. They raced them on Sunday. If they won, they sold them on Monday. The era produced greats like Nicholson, Jenkins, Vanke, Beswick. Some of these people are in the Hall of Fame today. They still kind of participate in drag racing, but on a limited basis. But stalkers is what put them where they are today. They were great then, and they're great today. You got it, Big Daddy. Up next, the professional evolution of stock, pro stock. Strategic Air Command secrets out there under the cornfields. The locals say we could tell you about it, but then we'd have to kill you. We are ready for pro stock quarterfinal action. And first up, the points leader, 23-year-old Robert Patrick. And there is a car sponsored by Roy Hills Driving School. Is that the professor, Ted? No, that's actually Mike Bell. The professor's been driving that car after he crashed his main car in Darlington, South Carolina at the Winter Nationals earlier this year. But Roy has a brand new car, folks. This is the real Mike Bell in this car. Mike Bell, Roy's crew chief. He's got a good mount under him. Roy has already won in this car this year. But the guy in the other lane, Robert Patrick, is one of the great young stars of this sport. This should be a great matchup. Well, Patrick is out first, a nice 422 light, one of only four pro stockers to go in the sixes thus far at this event. Patrick with an easy win, a 698, 200 mile per hour, but Bell stepped up. He ran a 699. Boy, Patrick ran the first sub seven second pro stock run here earlier in this competition. You just saw your first side by side sub seven. Now there is the professor, Roy himself, and his brand new Ford Thunderbird with 810 cubic inches of Ford V8 shoehorned under the hood. Before he races, here's this week's The Driver's School. Today, we're getting ready to stage the car with the front tire going into the first beam, which is the pre-stage. How many beams are they there? There's three beams, pre-stage, stage, and a guard beam. It's very important for racers to know something that they've overlooked. How far apart are these beams? From the stage to the pre-stage is seven and a quarter inches. From the stage beam to the guard beam is 16 inches. This is so, so critical. This is how you win races is by knowing the starting line. And there's another advantage that we teach in the Roy Hill Drag Race School. Next week, we'll teach you how to cheat the beams. This is Roy Hill for Holly. What? The professor's gonna teach us how to cheat something? I can't imagine such a thing. Our advanced auto parts camera will ride with Professor Roy Hill, and like every drag racing champion, he knows every inch of that strip. Going up against Jerry Yeoman from Galena, Kansas, 95 Thunderbird and 94 Chevy Beretta. Ride with Roy. Roy Hill actually would have red light, except Yeoman did it first. Hill with a 374. What a ride we had down the track at 199 miles per hour. Oh, I'll bet the professor was kicking himself after that one. Watch again. You see Yeoman trip the red light in the right lane. Well, he apparently left long before the tree was activated, and you apparently followed him because you were way under a 400, too. I was under a 400. I seen him move, and I dropped the clutch. Yeah, that's what uh, I figured. Car stayed hooked. Do we get an ET? 94, 200. 94, 200. Well, we've just got to go to the next run. Uh, I think uh, Billy Huff is in the next round and uh yeah, those are the guys that went 94 earlier but let's face it it's a little warmer out here now yeah we're dialing the car in and my crew's working real hard and this is a brand new jerry haas car this ford thunderbird is terrific two of them in the semi so far we'll see what happens thank you well, wouldn't it be something if it became an all roy hill drag racing team final here's a look at harold denton who beat second in points floyd cheek in the previous round his opponent the reigning world champion doug kirk Kirk hot off that win at the Empire Nationals up in northern New York. He'd like to repeat again. He'd also like to repeat the world championship, but never count the old man, Harold Denton, out with that party time car owned by the Ruth Brothers. Oh, what a life, Harold Denton, a 407. They are side by side at half track. Look like Kirk might drive around him. Kirk out he teed him a 693 to Denton's losing 705. What a shame. Look at this. Oh, did he ever leave on him? Down track they come. Now's when he needs the horsepower. Harold can't find the horsepower. Kirk gets around him. Well, I tell you what, Doug Kirk's got one of those new super secret Sonny Leonard V8s. And it's obviously got the legs. Our last matchup, this is 
Billy Huff, the former world champion, coming back after a disastrous season last year. His opponent, Jim Revis from Stafford, Virginia. A 94 Olds Cutlass against a 92 Olds Cutlass, both with 802 cubic inches under the hood. Well, Huff's the number three qualifier, one of only four cars to qualify in the sixes, so he has to be the favorite over Revis, who qualified number six. Well, it wasn't so long ago we were looking for that first Magic Sub 7 second Pro Stock run. Now we're seeing guys do it on every pass of the weekend. Revis out slightly ahead of Huff, but almost a heads-up start. It'll be Huff with a 6.95, 200.31 miles per hour. Revis was still in the seven. Oh, man, look at these brackets. Number two qualifier, Roy Hill, against number three, Billy Huff. And number one, Robert Patrick against number four, Doug Kirk. Three champions in the semis. In a moment, we'll move on to Alcohol Funny Car. Be there. The cornfield on the horizon, not quite as high as an elephant's eye, but pretty darn tall nonetheless. Speaking of corn, here's Brett Kepner with a corn-related track fact. Just about everybody by now knows that Mark Thomas has won three supercharged Funny Car World Championships with a corn-based fuel in the tank of the ethanol performed Dodge Daytona. But this week, just before the advent of this Mid-American Nationals, Mark had a press conference to unleash his newest speed secret on the world. What is it? This is actually our motor oil made from corn-based stock. So we have corn motor oil, not only ethanol in a fuel tank, but also corn in the motor. Now this stuff, as you've already told me about it, extending the life of the engine bearings, and this is five events now with the same engine bearings in the car. Yeah, I tell you what, we found that, that the wear and tear in parts is so much better with this than petroleum-based oil. It's just fantastic. Now you're the only guy that has this stuff, too. Yeah, and, and I'd have to say it gives us a little bit of an advantage. We've been having an awful good weekend out here. Now, well, keep in mind, don't let him fool you. He's also using an experimental clutch with a two-disc system and titanium pieces in it. That has something else to do with the horsepower in this thing. But maybe corn oil is the answer as well. Well, being a good corn farmer himself, I bet Mark Thomas would be willing to sell you a few bushels or quarts or however you measure it. These are alcohol funny cars, and there is the hottest alcohol funny car on tour right now, Ricky Bowie from Greenwood, South Carolina. His opponent, Lance Van Howen from Rhinebeck, Iowa. Ricky Bowie hot with two victories so far this year, the only time he's ever won in his entire career, running a big JP1 526 blown engine. Problems for Van Howen, who dribbled the front end off the concrete pad, an easy run for Bowie. Bowie wins it with a 606, and Van Howen beat him off the line. Bowie is living a charmed life. And Bowie really needed that win because this guy is up next, the wise guy machine of Scott Weiss from Hanover, Virginia, against Dennis Prochaska from Iowa Falls, Iowa. Weiss number two to Bowie in points by just 400. Weiss, the winner of the Spring Nationals this year, qualified with an impressive 6.08. And look at him on this run, a nice 4.50 reaction time, and cranks another 6.08. He'd be a great bracket racer. Oh, he blew something out of the engine compartment, though, as Prochaska had the same left lane traction problems that Van Howen did. So let's turn to Vern Motes from Des Moines, Iowa, going up against last year's world champion, Todd Payton. Payton just fifth in points coming in and looking for help. Moats qualified for, with a six flat, so watch for a five-second run on this one. He won this event last year. Moats, no, does not do that. A 6.20, though, will beat Todd Payton 6.21. Down goes Payton, so all of our winners so far in the right lane. Now, it'll be a single pass for Mark Thomas because of the odd number of competitors, and look at the rubber he lays down. Thomas qualified number two. He gets the second by, and look at the time, 598, 234 miles per hour. He does a Bob Newberry. An absolutely astonishing run for Mark Thomas. He'll meet Ricky Bowie in the semis while Vern Motes takes on Scott Weiss. Here's Brett. With all the tricks, Mark Thomas is uh, finally exposed at this particular event. You would have needed to come up with an excuse. How's it feel to run a 598 no. in the me? heat of the day? No, are you kidding me? Yeah! Incredible. I tell you what, you know, we had it loaded for bear first round, and the thing you saw we do, we shook the tires bad. And, uh, are you kidding me? This is great. And, uh, it felt fantastic. I mean, it was just marching I down can't there. imagine are why. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah! Ow! I tell you, we've been waiting this a long time. A long time. And the old one was close, and... We sat out Saturday night qualifying. The air didn't get better. We got to be to work tomorrow, and we wanted to get some sleep last night, and we didn't know if we should or not, and we loaded up for the first pass, and we backed it down a little bit for this one on the clutch because it was too violent. And uh, we're happy. We are happy. 
Good deal. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Believe it, he is happy. And we'll be back with more from Scribner in just a moment. Welcome back to the Snap-on Tools Mid-America Nationals presented by Napa. Bob Varsha, Ted Jones, Brett Kepner with you. We are ready for the semifinals of Pro Modified and only the top four qualifiers need apply. There is a close look at Shannon Jenkins driving for Norm Estes in that Chevrolet Corvette. Here's the similar machine of Chevy dealer Carl Moyer from Ankeny, Iowa. Here's Brett with more on Quick Carl. It was 12 short months ago that the man behind one of the nation's largest Chevrolet dealerships, Carl Moyer out of Ankeny, Iowa, took his first ever pro-modified national event title right here at the Nebraska Motorplex. But indeed, in that short year, Carl Moyer has gone on to even bigger and better things, if that indeed is possible. While his Chevy dealership continues to grow, Carl has expanded his operations in every conceivable sense, increasing his pro-modified existence by increasing his number of engines, for that matter, that have led him to the number two spot in the world pro-modified points chase right now. However, Carl has gone on into the drag strip business as well, purchasing a racetrack in Iowa, revamping it to the tune of $3 million, and only a week before this event, hosting a pro-modified 16-car open that was won by Tim McCamus only a week after his summer nationals win. Now as drag strip proprietor, still dealership owner, and professional pro-modified racer, Carl Moyer's books are full. It seems like uh, my days get consumed more and more as, as time goes on, and, and really, I guess I, uh, I don't know when to quit. And I'm, I'm kind of a glutton for punishment, but I love what I'm doing. The drag strip takes very little of my time. It takes quite a little bit of concentration, but my actual time, very little of my time. Now, you spent a tremendous amount of money revamping a racetrack that a lot of people thought was done for good. It, it was almost uh, a restoration, if you will. Yeah, really. In fact, uh, Brett, I'm somewhat of a hobby freak, and I've taken that on more as a hobby than a uh, business venture. The deal that I've got going there probably wouldn't make a lot of sense to a good banker, except it, uh, it's something I really want to do. And... Uh, the appreciation we're getting from the racers is really enough for me. Well, now Carl Boyer must shift his focus to the business of getting out of this semi against Shannon Jenkins, a pair of 1993 Chevy Corvette ZR1. And Jenkins immediately whips a gate job on Boyer. Now Boyer's going to have to really pull hard. No. Shannon Jenkins, 673 to a losing 696 for Boyer. Here's another look. Problems off the start line and flames under the hood for Carl Moyer. Mechanical problems, he never really got up on the cam. Here's our other pair. This is former world champion Tim McCamus. The man you just heard won Carl Moyer's first venture as a promoter. And there is the three-time and defending world champion Scotty Cannon. This is a rematch of the final of our most recent event at Morocco, Indiana. And here's how it went. Chevy ZR1 in the far lane, Killer Red Tomato, 1940 Willys in the near lane. Problems for Cannon right from the get-go. McCamus got a big morale-boosting victory there. Well, you can see the smoke pouring out of the engine as McCamus roared to that victory, but today is another day. And nobody is willing to burn parts the way Scotty Cannon is if it means getting him to victory lane. Great launches, side by side, Cannon carries the wheels, he's got half a length. It'll be Scotty Cannon, Tim McGame is turning on the red light incidentally, but it doesn't matter. Cannon ran a 6.59. If that isn't humiliating enough, we'll take a look at the foul start again. Well, when you can force Tim McGamus into red lighting by two thousandths of a second, obviously you're starting to terrorize these people. It's not even funny anymore. Now, here's the man that gave you that helmet. Why? Why did you do it? Well, I, I just really thought it looked kind of neat if he won the uh, championship wearing my helmet. He's got a better chance than I do. <laughs> now, 659, 209 again. Congratulations. I, I almost think, you can yell at me if you want, but I honestly think that you're hiding a lot more in this car. I think you've backed it down to a 59. We actually broke a lifter that round. And, hey, All we, right, we, then you proved my point. Not before we checked the bearings, I said, man, we got problems. So we got lucky and knocked it out and took a grinder and ground the hole back out. So this is twice too big for the, for the lifter that's in there. You've avoided my question or my statement. <laughs> <laughs> no, it runs good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's run all the way to the final for Scotty Cannon, who will meet Shannon Jenkins in a matchup of the number one and two qualifiers. Now let's move on to Pro Stock. 
Once again, we have the top four qualifiers in the four semifinal brackets. That was the Professor Roy Hill. This is young stud Billy Huff from Brooks, Kentucky. Hill hot off of that win in Steele, Alabama recently. And we're going to take a ride with Hill with our advanced auto parts in-car camp. This time, we'll be watching the driver and looking out the front window at what he sees. Ooh, as I recall, the last time we saw Roy in action with that face camera is when he just about went over the fence in Darlington. We keep trying to get Roy to do that again, but he just won't do it. Bob, I don't understand it. Jeez, hard to figure. It'll be Hill in the far lane with Ford Power. Huff in the near lane with an 802 cubic inch old V8 under the hood. Good green light start, nearly identical reaction time. This is a drag race, folks. Roy Hill, 694 against a losing 696. Wow. So that makes it 694 with a 1 and 694 with an 8 for Roy Hill. Just about as consistent as you can be. You can see how close it was at the 8th mile mark. It stayed that way. Let's take a look with our advanced auto parts photo finish. That's a close race. We move on to our next pair. Here is the defending world champion, Doug Kirk, the number four qualifier. And well back in points right now, he may be looking up at being a spoiler because in their near lane is Robert Patrick, the number one qualifier and the point leader. Patrick off on a roll, most previous round of 698. Kirk, though, ran a 693 last time out. It's going to be Patrick. Pulls it out 697 at 198. But listen to this. Kirk lost with a 697 at 200. Watch him run one more time because this is drag racing at its best, IHRA style. At the eighth mile, you can see Patrick out in front. Our advanced auto parts photo finish shows you a full car link victory. Well, Doug Kirk did everything he could, but it wasn't enough. So it'll be the Professor Roy Hill against the student Robert Patrick, number two against number one. Here's Brett. Oh, well, it's too bad you could run in the first half of the semi because you could have predicted, again, that Roy and Robert final. <laughs> well, you know, this, <laughs> this has been a real tough race for us. We come in here and we qualified number one, and we're heading to points. I think Roy's moved into second now. And this is going to be a... Come here, Roy. This is going to be a real good final, you know. Uh... Doug's a hard racer, and I got a lot of respect for him. He isn't a two-time or three-time world champion for nothing, and uh, I knew he was going to give me a hard race, and I had to be on the track. Well, that's all it was, because it was a 97 to a 97. So, Roy, the kid's going to be, he's hot today, reaction time. He, he's tough. Let me tell you something, Doug, Kurt, Billy, there is three of the finest young colts that you'll ever see, stallions. And, you know, I'm tickled to death to know I was in the final with you four guys, and I mean that. Well, in a moment, we'll see whether youth and exuberance can overcome age and experience. Stay with us. There was an awful lot of smoke out of the engine in Doug Herbert's first round 507 win, and here's why. This burn piston occurred so late in the run, however, that the damage to even the connecting rod was minimal. That means there wasn't that much damage to the cylinder head or the cylinder sleeve, and all they had to do was replace the piston. Right now, the Herbert Performance Parts team has to concern themselves with tuning for the heat of the day. The semifinal round is usually the tightrope walk for the top fuel teams that have to tune against the worst conditions they'll face in eliminations, and then, hopefully, get ready for the final round. All right, thanks, Brett. Fortunately, the worst conditions for racing top fuel cars are the best for walking through the pits and getting an autograph from the likes of top fuel sensation, Rhonda Hartman. She's got to go to work shortly, but let's start with alcohol funny car semifinals. There is Scott Weiss, who will go up against Vern Motes in our first pair. Vern Motes, a defending champion in this event, qualified number one. He's dialed into this track. So Scott Weiss, as experienced as he is, has his hands full with this man right here. Other two finals that are already lined up. The number one and two qualifiers have advanced. We have that potential here. Vern Motes, the number one qualifier. In the other half of the draw, Mark Thomas, the number two. They could meet in the finals. Both cars are away, and Motes slips off the line, but then problems for White. Scott Weiss was out first, but had troubles. Motes with a 6.01, 233 miles per hour. So he flirts with the five. A blower belt is what broke and put Scott Weiss out of competition. Boy, and he had him by two one hundredths off the start line. Now we go to Mark Thomas in that all corn machine against Ricky Bowie, who has the opportunity now to put a few points on Scott Weiss in the run for the championship. 
Oh, yeah, but what do you do? Thomas turned to five and red-lighted. Talk about the bobble of the entire event. Mark Thomas running in the fives, punches on the red light, charmed Ricky Bowie, goes into his third final. It'll be Ricky Bowie and Vern Motes, a golden opportunity for Bowie, but it'll be number one against number six, not number two. Now let's move to top fuel semifinals as we switch from alcohol to nitromethane fuel and the horsepower goes up to about 5,500. There's Jim Bailey in the Frank Vapor machine that carried Richard Langston to the world championship a year ago. And there is Butch Blair, who picked up his first national event victory this summer at the age of 52. We asked Jim Bailey about the intensity of competition in Top Fuel this year. All the guys have stepped up and they're running really good, and maybe they've caught us a little bit, and we've lost a little bit of our performance edge. And I think that that's what Frank and Ronnie are trying to come up with this weekend with this new engine combination. And as you know, we've just lapped the heck out of this thing, trying to gain that advantage once again. Well, he made reference to the talent behind the wrenches. Frank Faper, Ronnie Swearingen, a lot of very talented engine tuners out here in IHRA competition. A very upset-minded Butch Blair, a lowly financed operation. He does manage to stay competitive, though. He'd like to pick off Jim Bailey. Not going to happen, folks. Bailey, a 5'11", 275 miles per hour to repeat his ET from round number one. Watch one more time. First off the line was Butch Blair. He got the whole shot, but he doesn't have the raw horsepower. That takes cubic dollars. 5'11", for the second consecutive time. It's exactly set up the way you said it would be. Well, Ronnie said that he noticed that it quivered a little bit out about three or four hundred feet so we put a little bit of fuel in to try to stop that because we're trying to keep it from blowing the tires off so his conservative effort is probably going to at least consistently pay off for us okay 511 twice now in a situation regardless of who you're going to run in the final round did you plan on stepping it up for the big one um i think we can there's plenty left we're sure not hurting it got that championship to think about. So we'll let Frank Vapor and Jim Bailey think about it for a while. Doug Herbert telling his crew, I am ready. Back off. Let me run. Let me get at this woman, Rhonda Hartman, who set me down at the Super Nationals in Steele, Alabama earlier this summer. I want revenge right now. You can bet he's ready. Won the world championship in 1992. Loads of experience compared to young Rhonda. Off the line they come. It'll be Doug Herbert. A nice hole shot with a 507 wades through to a 509 victory. Ronda could only come up with a 519. And notice that both of those top fuel semifinals, very clean, arrow straight, no sign of tire smoke. It should be a great final. Here's another look. Look at the wheels coming off the ground as Hartman left the line. But now here comes Herbert. Wheels glued to the ground. He starts to make horsepower. That rear wing is working. No tire smoke. 509 again to her 19. Really? You left on her too, but it was 288. That'll officially give you a backup if you can run the speed record in the final. I'll tell you what, it'll cool off a little bit for the final, and uh, we'll have to step on it a little bit. What? Well, Ronnie's car's running real good, and uh, so I'm sure it'll be a good race. Their car runs real well, and uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that we can step up a little bit. I was just going to say, you can't look at them as running low 520s this time. You know, back-to-back -back 11s, you've run back-to-back -back, uh, low or high O's. It's close. I really think that they're going to run an O in the final, so... We got plenty more left. Well, you heard Jim Bailey say they might step it up. Doug Herbert just said they might step it up. Our third professional category offers number one against number two. Stay with us. Happy hour coming at Scribner. For the Snap-on Tools Mid-America Nationals presented by Napa. Bob Varsha, Ted Jones, Brett Kepner all in position for finals in our four professional categories. First up, Pro Stock, number one qualifier, Robert Patrick, in the right lane, on the left, his mentor, and number two qualifier, Roy Hill. Well, you know, as said, Hill was talking to Patrick just before this run, and Patrick said, you taught me everything you know, and Roy Hill said, no, I didn't. There's a couple <laughs> things I didn't teach you, and you're going to find out now. So let's watch and see as we're on board with Roy Hill. He said to Robert, I taught you everything you know, not everything I know. Our advanced auto parts camera will ride along with the professor in a matchup with his students. Second time this year we've seen it. First time Patrick won. Let's see if Roy can turn the tables now. Patrick is out first. He put it on the teacher. A nice hole shot. Let's see if he's got enough. No, Patrick has a problem. Roy Hill. 691 at exactly 200 miles per hour. The teacher shows him how. 
lights of his eyes as he watches that light and then looks to a point on the distant horizon as he grabs for the gears by memory. That is as quick and as fast as you will see in a pro stock car. I think Roy Hill will be more than willing to concede the first half of the war to his student. He left on you by 500s, but I don't think he was going to go 691, my friend. Oh, man! 691. I can't say enough for this Ford Thunderbird. Jerry Haas and I got the greatest crew there is. Mike Bell heads up these guys. I just can't say enough for all these people. This horsepower John Cosby's giving me, a 691? Did I make 200? You made 200. <laughs> is the daily double in pro stock racing we move on now to pro modified once again it's number one against number two there's number one as he has been for the last four seasons scotty cannon there is shannon jenkins bit of an upset to see him up there in the number two slot and in the final against the reigning world champ one big factor here though this is scotty cannon's 23rd final this is shannon jenkins first final Scotty Cannon is the winningest driver in Pro Modified history. The lights come down and they are away. Give it to Jenkins off the line, but Scotty is right there at half track. Wow, Scotty Cannon, 6.60 to a losing 6.67. That was a great drag race. Watch one more time. You can see clearly that Jenkins is off the line first, but he didn't have enough good old-fashioned horsepower. Scotty Cannon down on top end, up right by. Cannon Jenkins treed you good, and he went a 67. That was a close drag race. Yeah, it was close. About a thousand foot, I just eased off from him a little bit. But it was a good, it was a good run. I've been late on a lot. Maybe I'm a week or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you even want to give me some predictions when the weather cools off around the country? It ain't going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Jenkins treed Cannon, but Cannon trailer Jenkins in Pro Modified. And we move on to Alcohol Funny Car. There is Vern Motes from Des Moines, Iowa. In his 93 Dodge Daytona. In the other lane, Ricky Bowie great opportunity to pick up precious world championship points right here. Boats is tough, but Ricky Bowie has been charmed. Let's see if he can keep lucking through. Having a lot of problem with severe tire shake, had to shut it down as he lost traction. Burn Boats, 616 to pick up the victory. Boy, tire shake hardly describes it. Watch the right lane as he practically comes off the ground, and then the right rear slick breaks loose. Well, you can clearly see what's happening. That wheelie bar is kicking in, throwing him back down. The tire shake sets the whole thing up all over again. And now we move to the top fuelers with, oh, 10 or 12,000 horsepower split between them. Doug Herbert from Cherryville, North Carolina, the 92 world champion in his 14th final, goes up against Jim Bailey, for whom this has been Cinderella time all year long. Just his third final with one win to his credit. That win coming at the Spring Nationals, though, in Bristol, Tennessee, the event they all want to win. On the other hand, Herbert with seven wins and six runner-ups. Number one and number two staging up both 500 cubic inch Keith Blacks, and we've got a mosquito fogging contest. Smoke all over the place. It's Jim Bailey, 606. 249 miles per hour. What a neat drag race, like back in the 50s, Bob. I've never seen anything like that. Tire smoke from end to end, and both guys pedaling it all the way. Look at this. What a driving job. It starts to make them go out of shape because they're spinning so hard. A great driving job for both Bailey and Herbert. Herbert, particularly, as our advanced auto parts camera rides with Bailey, and watch what happens in the next leg. This is like the dog being wagged by the tail as the rear end slides back and forth. That was one of the wildest single duels I've ever witnessed. Wow. <laughs> what a handful. This is like driving an alcohol funny car. Uh, well, I think it was a little worse than that. <laughs> oh, God. 606 to 610. That's right. 606 to 610. Neither one of you were going to lift. It was that close. Well, I felt it start to shake, and I thought, well, it's going to, you know, it's going to smoke the tires, and I started to pedal it, and then it went up in smoke. Oh, it was burnout contest. So, what are you going to do? You just got to do it every again. Ronnie said, get the wind for it. But like okay. I said, you did this one. Thank you. And so the battle of the pedal pushers goes to Jim Bailey. We'll be right back. Intelligent oil for longer engine life. 
Let's take a look at the points. In top fuel, Jim Bailey made a little bit more of a solid lead with his victory here today. Doug Herbert moves in in second place, though. And in Pro Modified, Scotty Cannon begins to open that sure, steady lead. Over in the Pro Stock ranks, what a war. The teacher and the student, Robert Patrick and Roy Hill, nose-to-nose -nose fighting it out. And in Alcohol Funny Car, Ricky Boy could do no wrong, even though he scored a runner-up. Look at the nice opening he's beginning to cause between he and Scott Wise. Our next stop on ESPN coverage of the International Hot Rod Association will be the World Nationals from Norwalk, Ohio, coming your way September 2nd at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Check your local listings for an update. If you'd like to subscribe to Drag Review, call 1-800-554-9000. I'm Bob Barsha for Ted Jones and Brett Kepner. Thanks for being with us, everyone. So long from Scribner, Nebraska.